the desk of Lady Ada. Hello, everybody. And yes, it's me, Lady Ada, again at my desk here at my home. And with me today is the floating head of Phil, who will be joining us on this journey. Thank you, floating head of Phil. That's right. A lot like the floating head of death, but much friendlier and yeah. nicer. And knows a lot about funding. We'll be talking about the Valley of Death very soon. And that's true. Uh, we've got a show today as part of the Maker IO series. This is the Maker to Market Part 6 funding mm -hmm. of a 10 part series. So go watch the other five, but right now we're going to be focusing on funding. That's right. A uh, couple quick things. Um, if you followed the series, it was concept research, evaluation, design, prototyping, and as you said, we are up to funding. So, how do you pay for all this stuff? Um, before we talk about funding, Lady Ada, the prototyping video was the latest one. What did you talk about in prototyping? Prototyping is where we actually put together the hardware that we've designed, conceptualized, researched, designed, whatever, got components. We finally put it together in the last video. We soldered together a circuit playground and we showed the tester. So, you know, you have to actually do this, that part a couple of times until you get your, you're ready to go to print. You're like, you are you, solid you with your design. live SMT yeah. soldering. Yeah. Fine pitch soldering live on the internet. Yeah. It's a big deal. We needed a little bit of rework, but yeah. it, it, whatever, we'll get, okay. it, get it working. Well, you could have just done it at the office and tossed in, in we have an oven that, that we do. It. But you showed kind of a more makery yeah. way to do it. You will have to hand solder your prototypes. That's normal before you go to manufacturing. We'll talk about manufacturing in a future video. Um, but yeah, so once you get your prototype ready and, and you, you know that it's working and you, you have a prototype 3D printed case or mm. your software, you know that you're ready to take the next step and actually get this to customers because it's ready for customers' usage. Yeah. So they, you need to get some funding. That's one of the things about hardware in particular is even if you have your finished product, it's only one. You have to make a lot more. Yeah. And That's funding doesn't necessarily mean go out and ask someone for money. However, um, this was the overview that we grabbed from the Maker IO site. It says, uh, money may be, may be the root of all evil, but is also the most necessary of all evils now. Roots we'll need, are very important. Yeah, now you'll need to secure those dollars for your project. If you need to create accounts, round up investors, or apply for grants or fellowship, there's no time like the present. Set up crowdfunding accounts to get trip to the bank or start savings. Finally, make a marketing plan with special attention paid to funding and stick with it. So this one that we're gonna do is we're gonna show how to talk about some of the things that we do mm -hmm. in addition to what's going on out there in the world of hardware funding. Yeah. So um, the beginning of this is gonna be kind of an overview of some of the hardware companies or some of the companies that we all, that we're very familiar with. Um, Adafruit is a company in New York and kind of um, in that in that VC space, sometimes we get asked all the time, like, what do you think of this company? What do you think of that company? We get asked a lot of time to do manufacturing for some of these companies. We say no. We like to focus on our own uh, products. So we have some, you know, ideas and, and observations. A lot of the, the data is out there because when you file for uh, funding and more, mm -hmm. um, it's, pu it's publicly available yeah, information. Yeah, they talk about it. Yeah. Well, it's not, it doesn't have to be public, but the uh, funds usually publicize it because it's a good way yeah. to bring attention to what they're doing and also show that the company has funding and is strong. It, it's, it's, you know, part of the confidence of funding and uh, yeah. being funded. So of course, and during this too, we'll share some of our experiences. Uh, when I was at uh, Make and even before that, I, I was writing about the maker market. And uh, we have a special treat of a video from six years ago about what the hardware market was back then. And you and I did a five minute presentation at Food Camp East. It was at Microsoft's research um, building in Boston. Remember that? That's where it was. It was Food Camp East. Was it Food Camp 2010, East? 2010, okay. yeah. And uh, I had cataloged all of the, the maker companies. Yeah, that was in Kendall Square. Some of them aren't really here. Some yeah. of them are still here. Lots changed in six years, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Um, so, Bonus. Yeah, so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about all, all sorts of stuff. Okay, um, I'm ready. Yeah, and I'll interview you d during parts of this. And for the folks in the chats and all that, save your questions to the end. Uh, yeah, we're gonna just blast. Through. Yeah, we've got a bunch, so we're just gonna we're just gonna get to it. Okay, so uh, you know, Wikipedia, um, there's this chart, and it says the startup financing cycle. So, revenue is going like you know that way. Up. Time's going, you know, that way. I guess I can go that way. Yeah, he's confused. And it says valley of death. So you know, <laughs> yeah. you want to you want to break hmm. even at that some point. Great. <laughs> and then there's angels and friends and family seed capital, um, and then there's early stage funding. So the different stages of funding, 
Um, and most of the time, uh, we hear and see about the first, the first smaller ones um, that n people don't know about yet because they're you know smaller rounds. Sometimes we even get asked, "Hey, do you want to fund our company?" And we're like, "No, we're kind of doing a different thing." Mm -hmm. So the first one is usually a seed round, and it's or friends and family and, and all that. And, family, and it's yeah. just like here is like you know the the people that the the, the founder knows mm -hmm. gets money. And sometimes you know the founder and founder you know the, the founders themselves put in some cash. That's yeah. how Adafruit was started. I I put cash in. Um, you know, basically credit card, but yeah. that is my money, and then use that to buy components and parts, which which might be fine if you have enough savings. You know, five, we basically was like five to ten thousand dollars to start Adafruit. Yeah. So it'd be like Seed, not Seed Studios, who we're going to talk about later. But Seed is seed yeah, funding, it's right? and it's a little bit before Seed. It's like it's like basis. It's like you know, yeah. personal income because you don't you're not trading anything for it. Yeah. But well, yeah. maybe, but you know, friends and the the Seed round for could, friends and family. Yes, you should, yeah. you should have to trade equity. So okay. So let's say that you have some type of business going. You've yeah. got some seed funding or some friends and family. Get a little cash. Yeah, usually after that, that's when people start talking about the different rounds, the A, B, and C. Um, a is usually the, the first and smaller one. It's to get you going. And it's, uh, you know, 500K to 2 million. That's usually what you hear about, you know, the yeah. Series A. Yeah, there's Angel, then Seed, and then you can have multiple of each round, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, when I was looking at some of the uh, ways to think about this, they say usually Series B is B is for build. Yeah, I had my well, notes here. I've well, seen companies with Series H. I mean, like yeah, well, B is supposed is to be for build, and that's where um, y you want you have a company. There's revenue, and you're and you're getting round B to make it go big. Mm -hmm. That's that's what you want to do. B's and you need to do talent acquisitions and more. And that's where you want you know over. Five to ten million dollars. That's what usually what you hear yep. when it's Series B. And then C is uh, scale. And this is the yeah. But well, wait a minute, C doesn't stand for scale. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, okay. And uh, C is when you might want to get so much money where you can acquire a competitor or merge or something. That's in the twenty ten to twenty million. Yeah, and it's and it's probably a lot. And we've seen and we'll see, you know, all the way up to D, E, F, G, and all Dude, that you stuff. Dude, yeah. you can go on forever. Yeah. And, and when we were doing the research for this, you start to see some interesting things. There's patterns, and we'll talk about that. So anyways, there's different rounds. And believe it or not, some of the maker companies, some of the hardware companies that we know are in that, mm -hmm. in that, in that world. Um, and then in this chart, you know, there's the IPO, where you go public. You know, you sell parts of your company yes, to that's, everyone. Yes, that's not as likely as being acquired. But yeah. it's, this is, I think, a you know IPO basis. Yeah. What's interesting is you know that revenue chart though is idealistic. You know that's not. Yeah. I'm not. Well, you know, it's not necessarily going to be exactly like that. I think this is more conceptual. Yeah. So far, I'll say this: we don't know, and we've not seen a company that we're going to cover one of these maker companies go IPO. They've been acquired by one that's, that's right. publicly held, but no maker company that we know that I can think of off the top of my head have gone IPO. There's been f lots of funding, lots and lots of funding. There's been mm -hmm. in a merger acquisition, acquisitions, acquisitions. merger acquisitions, but none of them have gone public. Yeah, I robot did, but that's way before the maker movement. That does count. And it's also military yeah. robotics. Yep, so it's doesn't count. It's different. Doesn't market. count for what we're talking about. I know, I'm just thinking it's of who we market. know who's been IPO'd. We don't. Yeah. I can't think of any. So let's start off with Particle. So um, I guess, you know, full disclosure, uh, we stock the Particle product. Mm -hmm. um, we're not investors. We're not on any boards of any companies at all whatsoever. No. Um, we purposely don't do that. So we can do cool video broadcasts like this and just talk about anything. Mm -hmm. So um, Particle, and this is uh, from Crunchbase, they received 4.23 million in five rounds from six investors. So the most recent funding was last year, 578K of uh, project crowdfunding. And I guess that was their latest their, yeah, they their Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Yeah, but that's not the ma the majority of the money did come from a Series A. That yeah, they did. and we'll hop around. Um, I believe it was Root Ventures who uh, put in um, the uh, funding. Big chunk. So they did four investments so far, and this is uh, Avidan. Avidan. Avidan Ross and. Uh, the funds raised for the fund is 62 million, and so far they they put in um, 4.2 million to uh, Particle, and, and they're the calling seed. that seed. Yeah. So um, that's their version of seed. 
And it uh, does, yeah, it just it doesn't matter. I think the CEO's rounds. What? Yeah. What, not only is it order, but it's how much equity you're giving. Yeah. You're going to give a lot more equity per dollar at the beginning because your valuation is lower. It, usually, yeah. I mean, like it's rare. Sometimes it goes the other way. That's not usually a good scene. But yeah, you're going to have to give away a lot more at the beginning. And then later on, you'll be able to get more money for the okay. percentage. So that's Particle. That's a hardware company. And mm -hmm. we sell the, the hardware on Adafruit. You can yeah. buy it from Particle. And basically, their model is um, it's venture funded. And the hardware is basically sold at cost. Yeah. And they hope to have, I guess, an enterprise play. Uh, where they're they're charging for a service? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I don't right? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, okay. like probably, okay. but they used a combination of funding, crowdsourcing, and um, accelerator. Okay. So they really had a little bit of everything. Okay. So, but the from what you can determine, did they make money on the hardware? Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Probably not. Because we we make similar things. Yeah, it's okay. it's something to think about. I okay. think that they're I think they're trying to you know their 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 technique is yeah try to get the price low maybe get acquired maybe get a big customer come in and they buy a lot. Okay. Yeah, they so, have only like two bucks each or something. Okay, so four point two three million five round six investors. So let's say you know let's call an even five. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. next up, um, Siftio. They were um, uh, funded thirteen million two rounds from two investors. And they were acquired by 3D Robotics. So this is what they sometimes call uh, an aqua hire. Yeah. Where um, Siftio, the team, went to 3D Robotics. And Siftio were these... Um, Little, like, bricks that talk to each other? Yeah. Micah were, actually worked on them. Yeah, Micah, cool. who is uh, a super talented engineer. Uh, and if you look at what Siftio is, they were um, in the MoMA store. And they mm -hmm. were, um, I guess... LCDs, like I guess I would say, like little tiny Game Boys, right? They were, in fact, little tiny. Yeah, I they mean, were like Game Boy cubes. Almost literally like the same chipset and the same. Sort yeah. Of, I mean, the idea was that these little bricks you could move them around and you could uh, play games that had to do with motion and movement. Yeah. So it was like physical computing. Yeah, and so game computing. and so I don't have any inside information on this, but my uh, uh, understanding of Siftio is they went out of business basically and. Um, 3D Robotics grabbed the team. I think, yeah, I think yeah. what happened was they did not succeed in the market, um, which is, it, it can be its own video, you can research that, yeah. but um, the hardware is very interesting and the people who designed the hardware had a lot of expertise in manufacturing and design, like a lot of like taking things to market, making things yeah. look very good. They were very beautiful. And that in itself is a very important skill doing the injection molding and manufacturing and purchasing. And so I think, yeah, 3D Robotics came in and grabbed the, the team and basically said, well, we'll pay you for yeah. The team and, and, and basically, yeah, aqua hire. Okay. And as you've noticed, uh, these numbers are getting bigger. I put this in order. This is 13? This is 13. 13 million. Okay. Next up. Little bits. $62 million. How many rounds? This is five rounds from 21 investors. The most recent funding was $46 million, and that was July of last year. Series B. Series B, okay. this is $62 million. Now, let's bring up another point. When you get funding, the, the, the thing that you hear from VCs is like, well, you want to get 10 times the return yes. when, when the company's acquired. Because only nine, nine out of 10 of them fail, yeah. so they need one out of 10. Yeah. To, to so succeed. if you got 10 million in funding, the VCs want to see the sale of 100 million That's right. or more. At least. At least. Yeah. So they put 10 million in, they, they want to see the, yeah. the company sell for 100 million. Yep. So, Little Bits, open source hardware company. Aya covered her lots of times. She recently was on the covered a cover of Wired UK. Mm -hmm. um, Co-founder of the Open Source Hardware Summit. Um, she started uh, uh, the Open Source Hardware Definition. We were part mm -hmm. of that with mm -hmm. her. So some Media Lab, MIT Media Lab, yeah, like very similar to you, yeah. right? And so also a New York company, That's hardware true. company. That's true, Open Hardware, yeah, that's so, the street. So they went down the funding path, yeah. and the funding path for them means they're at 62 million, and that means they are either going to need to sell for 600 million, let's just do, you know, just multiply it, or like IPO, like that seems to be the two, the two ways this is gonna go. So 62 million in funding, so that means uh, someone's gonna, Need to buy them for six hundred million, yeah, and and or an IPO. So this might be the first hardware company we see that that goes IPO in our circle. Yeah, it's interesting. The more you know, it, there's it, getting more money is not necessarily better. I'm not sure in this case. I'm not. I don't know enough about, about the company, but yeah. 
getting, you know, it could, you know, you can look at a company like Particle and be like, wow, you know, they're worth so much more than that. Their product oh, is really good. Hang on to that thought because we're gonna, we're still moving along. No, I know, but yeah. I'm saying like, the more them getting more is not necessarily better. When you when you get funding, you can you can kind of aim for what you want, and you should get exactly how much you want and need, but not more. Because if you get more, then again, you you're you're forced into this. Um, the stakes 10X. get higher. The stakes get higher. The stakes Absolutely. get much higher. Yeah. Another thing that's interesting is there's 21 investors. So some of these companies they yeah. have a single investor per round, but this company you can tell that they had to have multiple investors put in. So a lot of people are very interested, and this is part of like the social strategy. Getting a lot of investors interested will actually there's trade offs. You'll get of course more cooks in the kitchen, as they say, but they will all be able to contribute something. So that's another thing to yeah. think about when you're, when you're getting funding, getting more investors, more money, more people involved, but it also means, you know, maybe more board seats have to be given up. Yeah. And they, there might be like different investors have con competing views. So it can be yeah. tough. Like, how do you make them all happy? Yeah. And uh, recent news that uh, we covered on the Maker Business newsletter mm -hmm. at adafruitdaily.com and on our blog, I believe. Um, Little Bits was accepted to the Disney Ventures program. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe Disney, the, the last kind of high profile one that I remember was Furio, and they did that, that toy, the um, Star Wars toy, the little yeah. ball that balances. Which I think worked out really well. Yeah, Sphereo, like that's, that, that, that is a, a match. So we'll see if that's where Disney's going, uh -huh. if they're looking to do something with Little Bits in that way. We'll if see. there was a company that could spend hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. on, on a technology, Disney's one of them. Okay, so that was. 62 million. Okay. Next up. Okay. And again, these are ones that we know about. These are, a lot of these are like, you know, in New York because we know about New York. And then we have a couple others. This is the, a really high profile one for us because uh, the story of this is interesting. Um, 3D robotics used to be DIY drones. Mm -hmm. And the founder, Chris Anderson, was uh, editor in chief at Wired. And he's the one who puts you on the cover of Wired magazine. And he wanted to do a kit company. Yeah. He was doing, and he, he's and he, like, I want to do this thing. I yeah, he actually, like he said, like, I want to do that. Yeah. And so 3D Robotics is the name of the company. I think they're just calling it um, 3DR, 3DR now. Yeah. But uh, right now, they are up to $126 million from five rounds from 14 investors. And the one acquisition they did was Siftio. We talked about that yeah. before. So you see how these are all connected. When you look at our presentation at the end, you'll see some of these names. Some of these companies have been around for a while. Like, yeah. we've been covering these for a bit. So 126 million. So if we do our little 10x thing, what does that mean? How much do they need to be acquired by if the, if we're going by that like 10x thing? It sounds like it's a billion dollar. It's company. a billion dollar. But company. drones could be a, a billion dollar industry. Yeah. I mean, if they if they can get part of the market, that market is huge and it's growing. And that's yeah. another thing is if people, if investors think that the company has a lot of potential, they're willing to put yeah. that money. Yeah. And in. if you look at like, um, is it Digi? Is that how you say it or DJI? DJI. Yeah. DJI. Anyways. Um, I think Chris Anderson, the CEO of 3DR, um, has said this before. The, the, the DJI is like the iPod, the iPhone of drones. And, and so that's the market he's going after. Okay. So There's usually space for two or three competitors. Yeah, and you, you know, at some point, this is an American company. I'm sure that there's a lot of emphasis to have an American company, not a Chinese company, having the number one mm -hmm. supplier mm -hmm. of uh, drones. And uh, so we're at $126 million. The... Um, uh, other so, so, uh, part of this is uh, DIY Drones was an open source hardware company. I don't believe Solo is an open no, source. I don't believe the, you can the like the designs get, are, and I think some of their modules are. Yeah, and the Solo isn't their only product. They have you know they have a plane version. I think they have a helicopter version. So those I yeah. think are, but they're slowly not selling them. The, the, of course, the plans are still open source, yeah. but the new designs are not. Yeah, and you can tell the focus of the company when it was a, a hobbyist company, it was DIY drones, and now it is a commercial company. Mm -hmm. You can go to Best Buy and buy a Solo. That's right. Very different. Okay. We saw them in Best Buy. <laughs> we did. Okay, next up. Okay, 120. 120, that's it. That, and they're still, they're around. They're around. You can go and see the, uh, the website and the, go to your local electronics store. You might, like a Best Buy, you might see the, the Solo booth. Um, the uh, kiosk thing. Also, uh, speaking of that, uh, Little Bits is in Barnes & Noble. You can see the uh, Little Bits inside Barnes & Noble now. We were there. We have a photo on our yes. site. Yeah. Uh, some of the make stuff is in there, Do too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Next up, we're getting big numbers here. These are scary. So, Quirky. Now, uh, Quirky is interesting. It's a New York company. 
Um, on uh, Crunchbase, it says Quirky has been closed. Well, that's one way to say it. Um, Quirky went bankrupt. So it was going, 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 and then shuttered. And they made, they didn't make open source hardware, but they did make hardware. They were a hardware company. Yeah. And they started doing electronics, they had a little robot kit, and they had like a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, they're best known for that um, uh, power. Squid. Power. Thing. It was no, like a power. Rotator yeah. yeah. And the snake, power yeah, snake, power the, snake. The idea of Quirky was um, get people's ideas, and Quirky would go to market with them. Mm -hmm. So you'd put you 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 put your idea in, and they had evals, and then they would figure out, they'd vote. There's all sorts of like you know community stuff, and then they would make they would make the products. Yeah. And uh, we followed this for a while because um, you in particular kept getting compared to Ben. And when journalists would talk to you, they would say, well, why aren't you doing stuff like Quirky? Why don't you have like crowdsourced ideas? Yeah, they well, were a crowdsourcing idea company. Yeah. Not crowdfunding, crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing, ideas. yeah. And it was interesting because like this was as Adafruit was growing in New York. And Quirky was the media darling. You can look at all the stories in New York Times. Great build out. Yeah, they have an amazing building. We um, went to the Quirky building um, when we were looking for a place for Adafruit. And we decided not to go in that building. Um, it, it would be, it would have been really expensive. So it's it was one of the most expensive build outs. So you can search for the architecture firm. So you can see where all the money went. So where did the hundred and seventy five million dollars go? Well, it went into architecture. It went into um, build outs. It went into this. They got big, all sorts of machines. Yeah, big expansion. They had a um, they they bought the same machines as Adafruit has for a, a, a San Francisco factory that was sold to Flextronic, which is now called Flex. Mm -hmm. So, um, really interesting story. Um, went out of business. They laid off everyone. It was like 300 people or so or more. And that's the end of, of Quirky. Uh, GE uh, had um, invested in, I think, uh, Carl Bass from Autodesk, um, Beth Comstock from GE. So those are our advisors or investors. And that one's interesting because that came along and then Kickstarter came along. So this idea, there was a, it was before. Pre Kickstarter. It was pre Kickstarter. I think Indiegogo had been around, but it wasn't popular. Yeah. Like nobody believed in it. Yeah. So they were, they didn't do crowdfunding. They did crowd sourcing of ideas. Yes. And they took on all the risk of yeah. manufacture. Yeah. And so if you look at some of our past articles, if you go to the Adafruit blog and search for Quirky, you can see kind of the story. Um, they had a, a video where they said we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on a boombox, and no, there was only five sales. Yeah. So the the ideas came in from the community, but the execution and the sales and the demand wasn't there. They were, in a sense, an accelerated maker to market because they had all the makers submit projects. And yeah. People, it, you should go and check out how it worked because it is a fascinating lesson in. Just because people voted up an idea does not like does not mean yeah. it's going to be a commercial success. So like people would vote up these projects and they'd have evaluation and it would be very crowdsourced idea based. Yeah. Like all the research, development, design, yeah. naming would be crowdsourced. And in the end, other than like two products, there were a lot of duds. And they also acquired a company, a design company. They um, had a um, Internet of Things like home. Home company, yeah, that they which were doing, spun out yeah, which Qualcomm. spun out. Anyways, so, long so story. yeah. So, anyways, in New York, this is a big deal because you know there was quirky, and um, we were ignored. Um, it was cool because like no one really was interested in our story because we weren't this like New York Times media darling that everyone was writing about and like oh Ben's crazy, he's quirky, like look at all the stuff he's doing. Mm -hmm. And um, the the unfortunate part is a lot of really smart people lost their jobs recently. So that was that was the end of it. And um, you can check it out. We, we did, I think, a pretty good job covering this New York story because there was just nothing. It was, it just went away. Yeah. So anyways. Um, next up. So, OK, we're up to these big numbers. So 175 million, that means it's a more than a billion dollars. So it might be harder to get funding when you have that much funding, when you need more funding. So the next one that we have on our list that we're watching right now is Magic Leap. So they have total equity funding, 1.3 billion. I don't actually know that much about what Magic Leap is. I yeah. mean, like I keep hearing about yeah, it. Yeah, let's go to the computer. Go to, uh, let's yeah, see, let's see, let's see what they're saying about Magic Leap. So this is, this is where things, this is the funding size. So, uh, so Magic let's, go to, let's go to your computer. Okay, well, they have the Whoa, there's the a whale. gigantic videos. Okay. So it's, I guess it's like AR, but like, I'm, okay. has anyone ever used it? I don't think okay. so. 
I read it's the Wired heard, story. Yeah, I read yeah, this, this story. Is great. This so is a great it's story. this. Um, it's like these AR glasses, and apparently they really let you do AR. But yeah, the largest C round of financing in history, eight, almost eight hundred million. So one point four billion in funding. And and we have that in our list of the the venture capital is uh, mostly Qualcomm. This thing must be the coolest. This must be the best demo in the world. I mean, I have n nobody seen you it. You must put on like you must wear the PowerPoint, and then you're just like, here's my money. Okay. That'd be cool. So, anyways, we we yeah. don't know, but it's it's completely secret. Like I don't think anyone has ever seen or or tried it. Everybody, it's all under NDA. There's like these lasers. That. That's cool. This is kind of cool looking. But one point four billion, and and they haven't shipped anything. So I, I think I don't know if that's true. What I I don't know what what things Magic Leap has shipped. But oh, again, really? okay. yeah, but again, this is about funding. So yeah. they're doing, these are all hardware. These companies all have done hardware in some way. And, um, or, you know, physical goods. That's what we were, we were interested in. Okay, so that's Magic Leap. So we'll see, we're gonna keep following the story. A good this demo is, is a, big is one. a good demo. Okay, um, so in our world, this was the article I wrote about MakerBot back when they got 10 million in funding. This was like 2000, uh, mm -hmm. 11 or yeah, you can just you can type uh, uh, what Tyrone Magazine Brie interview, and uh, you can look at the the date on this. Oh um, boy! Yeah, there it's it is. October six, two thousand eleven. Yeah, two thousand eleven. Okay. So this is right when um, MakerBot got funding, and then later they were acquired by Stratasys. Hackaday promptly wrote their obituary and said the $400 million acquisition um, with Stratasys, that's it. So that's the... the so they got $10 million They got $10 million and then they were acquired by Stratasys. And it was probably $400 million. That's the... I think it was, yeah. I mean, it was public. It was a mix of stock and... Um, yeah. So, you know, lots of conversations about this because 3D printers were um, kind of the darling of... The, yes, the, they only had $10 million in venture funding, and then they were sold for $400 million, which means it was a 40X. 40 40 X. There you go. So they, they fulfilled their yeah. obligations. Yeah, so someone made out on that. So that's the, that's the ones that we have followed, we know about, and those are hardware companies. Oh, Some, you know what we forgot? We forgot Cast AR. Cast AR. Yeah. I don't know the. I don't know the. The. the there was a ca crowd. There was it was a crowd crowdfunded, funded and then it was. Yeah. Um, Do you want me to go to? Uh, yeah. Let the me. Computer. Because okay, so they. Um, technical illusions. Yeah, let's go to the computer real fast. Okay. Look it up. So I just looked this up. So uh, 15 million, Series A round. So a single investor okay. from Playground. So there's another example. Okay. And there's like, there's more that we probably forgot, but um, Jerry Ellsworth, uh, she did videos mm -hmm. with us a long time ago. She also is well known in the maker world, um, probably one of the most high profile engineers in the maker world. And this is you can see where like the world's going a little bit. Like where's the bit, where's the most amount of money going towards right now? Well, um, the largest amounts are this VR type thing, this mm -hmm. AR type thing. So Magic Leap, maybe yeah. Magic Leap is going to acquire Cast they AR. They could. I it mean, could be an aqua hire. That would you know, that's a great way for them to use the the billions of dollars that they have. Yeah. But this is interesting, and we'll talk about how they did crowdfunding, and then they switched to. Um, yeah. We, we, we will talk. Yeah, about we got a bunch now. of stuff. Yeah. So those are those okay. are the ones that we know about. We've kind of followed. Again, we're not. These aren't investment strategies. We're not connected to any of these companies. There's we no judgment calls. We're just yeah, we're not on the boards. We're not. We have no money in the game. So this is this is us looking at the hardware world, thinking, well, should we do something like this? Maybe, maybe not. So who out there? funds these companies. That's probably one, what you want to know next. So um, OATV, um, this is O'Reilly Alphatech Ventures. Um, they're best known for a bunch of ones that you may not uh, remember. Um, they've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. And OATV, uh, what I did is, because there was 96 investments in 53 companies, uh, what I did is I took a little video. Which means it. they invested approximately twice yeah. in every company, which is normal. Yeah, and so what I did is I, I just kind of did a screen thing. So they put in $30 million of a Series B for 3D robotics back in September of 2013. And then they put in another $50 million for yeah, Series C. They invested in Particle. Yeah, they invested in Particle. They invested in Instructables. They invested in Chumbi. They Maker did Chumbi twice. Yeah, Chumbi. They did Make. Make Magazine, a yeah. little bit. They did a seed of 3.6 million. Code Academy. Yeah, so they're a around. Of, a lot of familiar Yeah, companies. Chumbi, they put in 12 million. 
So they, they've been around. They've been doing this for a bit. Uh, Wasabi, which was a, um, a finance site. Uh, so they, watch them if you're looking for you know, where, the, where the hardware investments might be coming from. Um, speaking of, PCH. So PCH, they have 77 million, and they're a fund, which is also, uh, it's a privately held company, so they, they get money to then invest in Yeah, this is, this is both ways. They do investment, like you know, some companies have an investment arm, so this is, they've been invested in, but they also invest in yeah. others. Did, did PCH invest in Little Bits? Yes. They did, and then Absolutely. PCH was doing the manufacturing. Yes, that was part of the deal. They were the deal. seed or Series A, it was very early. Okay. Um, and then the interesting thing, see how we kind of wrap it all up here? Um, PCH bought Fab for $15 million. So let's just do a recap. Do you remember how much Fab got in funding? We didn't put Fab in, did we? Oh, uh, I thought it did. We put, Quirk, we put Quirky in. Oh, here it is. $336 million yeah. in funding. And what happened? Acquired by PCH for 15. That's a negative return on investment. Yeah, it's 120. I mean, that happens too. <sighs> yeah. That happens. So that's, that's, that's the end of that story. Yeah, PC is just interesting because they're extremely hard. They, they are, they do hardware manufacturing. They'll do the, you know, they don't, they don't buy, comp they, they manage factories for you. So basically, you know, you, when you get investment from them, they will help you do your mass manufacture, but the trade-off is you have to use them. And so you're kind not, I don't want to say stuck, but you are. if you have to use them. I don't know if that's true. You, I, I think you... I don't know. If anyone watches, they can tell us. Yeah, I would like to hear... It'd the, be weird uh, to not use their own factories yeah, and company I th and connections. I think the expectation is, at least you do. I mean, that's part of why you take an investment from them is that they'll help you with manufacturing, um, mm. which is actually very handy. Like, that, they, could, they could take care of that. They'll do packaging, shipping, fulfillment. Um, you know, they'll actually ship the goods via FedEx from China for you yeah. to each customer. So they can do all of that. So that's... When you're looking for... Investors and what investors can bring to the table. This is a it's unusual situation, but something that could be very valuable. Okay, so you're probably wondering who's funding all these giant investments. Well, looks like Qualcomm's one of them. Uh, Qualcomm Ventures, they're throwing down some cash. So they're the one who put in the 793 million Series C. Well, they Magic put in League. part of it. That's probably multiple people. Mm. But they probably put in like 200 million. <laughs> I, don't, I think that was. I think yeah. that's them. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know how Could be. crunch base yeah, I think when you get to Series C, you get, like, multiple investors, and wow. so, like, they'll put in a third, and they'll put in a third. But, like, yes, I mean, they'll, yeah, they are putting Yeah, 220 investments, 167 country, uh, companies. And, you know, Qualcomm probably made a bundle from all these um, things that they've done in the past, so why not, you know, invest it in the next thing? So um, some of the more recent ones in, uh, let's see, 2 Million Venture and Apps Daily, Fab Hotels, Weka IO Strider 360, 360 Fly. What's 360 Fly? 360 Fly, $40 million. I don't know, Google for it. See what 360 Fly is. It sounds like a hardware thing. 360 Fly, Ninja Cart. 360 it's a 360-degree camera. <clears throat> oh, yeah, look at that. So it's a panoramic camera. Oh, I've, you know what? We saw that at Best Buy. Yeah. Okay. It's on sale. Okay. So they, they, they do invest in hardware, and they probably help manufacture spec parts. You know what? There's probably Qualcomm parts inside. Yeah. You know, these are another okay. thing. Okay, so it's 500 bucks. It's $500. Yeah, it's a $500 camera. It's a $500 action camera. Yeah, 360 action camera. Okay. So that's cool. That's it. That's cool. All right, so that's what they're, that's what they're doing with their money. Um, so next up. Uh, this is one of the newer ones. Uh, we recently covered this. This is Root Ventures. They have $62 million early stage venture root.vc and uh, so invest in a particle yeah. invest in a particle so far 4.2 million and here's the interesting thing so you know all these like VCs are like on Twitter and they talk they love talking they love talking on Twitter they love talking about money and so I saw this tweet uh, from uh, Avedon Ross and uh, sent, sending or soldering wires depending day of the week founding partner at RootVC and uh, he did an interview, and I'm gonna here I'll get rid of uh, later for a second. Yeah. Hi. So this is what he says. There was an interview for I think strictly VC, and the question that they ask all the VCs when they do interviews is in the context of early stage investing, what's something that you believe that isn't necessarily a popularly held point of view? So he has a VC fund. And he says I think that most hardware companies should never take venture money. All right. 
Um, if you walk down the aisles of Best Buy or Target, nearly all those products were never venture backed. Do not feel pressured to measure your success as your ability to raise venture capital. I think that's important because he's saying it isn't, you're not a successful hardware company based on the amount of money you can raise. What he's saying is if your product has the ability to be a Trojan horse for a much larger recurring revenue or network effect driven business, it might be worth pursuing venture investment. So, so, like, so something like uh, Dropcam where you have to pay a monthly fee. Yeah. So it's like you're not just buying the hardware. Yeah. After you buy the hardware, there's a monthly he, recurring revenue. He's saying, look, don't get VC if you're just selling a thing. Get VC maybe if you're selling a thing that has a recurring revenue model after mm -hmm. or there's something that you have to buy a bunch of. And then he goes on to say, I like to think of entrepreneurs as fire starters. You can build a fire with brush, then twigs, then branches, and while it might take a while, the flame is sustainable. Meanwhile, venture capital is like gasoline. If your fire is not built to consume the fuel, it can destroy your business. Whee! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think that's a really, really good insight. Yes. Which is, because I've seen this, is people start to measure su their success based on how much venture capital they can get, not how many good things they're shipping. Mm -hmm. And it, and it is like gasoline. It really is. It is. It's an accelerant. Um, you have to spend the money very fast. Yeah. You're expected to spend the money very fast. Yeah. Why aren't you doing more? Where's your Super Bowl commercial? You're also expected to spend almost all the money within two years. So if you take forty million or fifty million or ten million, They're, your burn rate just goes right your up. Your burn rate, not only, not only will it likely go up just because you have more money, but it is actually expected that will go up. Yeah. If you don't spend the money, that means you're not reinvesting. And so the VCs will be like, well, we gave you $10 million. Why aren't you investing that in hiring people, acquisitions, yeah. you know, whatever it my is. My kid went to Best Buy and my kid didn't see the thing that I'm invested in. Like this, exactly. is, this is exactly what it is. 100%. Yeah. They're like, how come you don't have an end cap? Why, why, you aren't, you, why aren't you in, in Toys R Us? Yeah. Why aren't you? I went to Radio Shack, I didn't see the thing. You know, we forgot also Gotenna. I'll look that up too. Gotenna? Yeah. Yeah, they're venture backed. They are venture backed. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep looking up. So, um, yeah. we'll, go, we'll come back to these. Yeah. Because we said, you know, they had an impact. Yeah. So, next up, we have a list of uh, hardware accelerators. Yeah. So, let's hop to your computer. Um, again, we're using Crunchbase as the, you know, you can... There's other places, but this yeah. is it, okay. it's convenient. This is 9.3 million. They are a New York company. We had... And Dan they just closed around like two months ago. Yeah, we had Danielle on uh, Ask an Engineer with Raphael not too long ago. And you can um, also see the photos. We took a photo of the Go10 end uh, cap at REI, speaking of. Yeah, and what's, what's interesting is, you know, they also did crowdfunding to venture so they did yeah. it we did a teardown of the um of the hardware yeah. yeah yeah anyways interesting yeah interesting so okay 9.3 million 9.3 total uh, what, you click, know, can you uh, go to the top of this and click um from eight investors let's see who the investors are yes of course let's see who we if we know them bloomberg hard ficklestein venture ventures prolific walden warness.io okay yeah i don't know but bloomberg beta sounds interesting so that sounds like you know bloomberg they will they have a lot yeah. of cash and they'll go they'll go invest. look up um, little bits because uh, we should probably see who in that world um, mm -hmm. so 21 investors okay let's see what the latest is do 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 DFJ. Okay, foundry foundry didn't foundry do yeah brad feld that's makerbot they did Makerbot. they did makerbot too. for sure joanne wilson put in okay, Joy Edo put in. yeah i don't know what order this is it looks like alphabetical it's just alphabetical yeah. okay Miyatani, which is joy Edo's yeah. group Nicole Ponte, Nicole Ponte, OATV, she, she at, yeah true ventures all right two sigma two sigma okay so yeah you can see and and this is you know it, it's it's fun to kind of look but it also will give you an idea like who should you go for if you have a product that's similar to an existing hardware device that has gotten funding or you feel like those if, if somebody was able to invest in that they'd invest in you yeah. that gives you a, a focus like it doesn't make sense to chase after if you know if you're doing like a, a, a rf project like go tenant it doesn't necessarily make sense to go after investors that usually do biotech yeah. or medicine so if or you do software. yeah so if you do a uh, uh like a block product that's a, a uh for learning in stem that's sort of like little bits, but you know, maybe doesn't use magnets. Yeah. If you were looking for funding, you might want to approach them. Just be aware, you know, if, if assuming that they think that this is working out, yeah. but they'll at least be able to tell you who else might be interested. You know, the, yeah. the, it's, it's, it's a good idea. Like it'll, it'll give you a list of people to try to approach. Yeah. Okay. If you're going to go this way. Okay. Which Avi Danois says you shouldn't, but 
if you do. I, I think this is super interesting because we're not in that that world. Um, we know a lot of people in it. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of We've been asked to participate in it. And we're like, you know what? We're just going to focus on our thing. But this is interesting because we don't really watch TV or anything. This is like, ooh, like what person is on this show and what, what personality drives this fun? Um, if you look, there's a theme um, across some of these things. So Brad Feld, I remember his name because he did the MakerBot investment. Okay. Jenny Lawton was the COO, I think, of MakerBot. Then she became the CEO of MakerBot. And then she went a little bit and she became the CSO, Chief Strategy Officer. And according to her blog, she's out of little bits for at least the summer. So there's a, there's a group of people that tends to go around. So if you're thinking about getting funding, you probably want to look for that theme and like, what's the persons that are constantly in this? Yes, you will, you will, if you get investment, you're usually going to yeah. get a board. You're definitely going to get board members, whether you like it or not. And they'll usually also kind of start installing other people, you know, vice presidents or, or C-level people that, that are, you know, they're experienced. Yeah, it should be helping you um, guide, mm -hmm. you know, through Which the, can be good or bad. They can yeah. be good because they have a lot of experience. Okay. It could be challenging if they don't agree with you on something. Now, things. since we're talking about hardware. Well, we are. There's hardware accelerators. Yes. And there's hardware venture funds. So we're familiar with some of these, and some of them we're not. So um, let's, uh, let's start looking at the site. So the first one is... Lemnos. Lemnos. And... Uh, all right, yeah. I'm going to go, I have, a, I have a slide for each one, but if uh, the sites are out, you know, you never know, so I have to do screenshots. Okay, yeah. so this is hands-on, early stage uh, funding. 250K to 1 million. Yeah, that's what... Which is quite a bit. Yeah, that's, a big, that's a fair seed okay. round. Let's see the companies that they've, they've invested in. Um, Nima. Spire. That's, that Spire sounds... Oh, I think Spire, I didn't... Isn't that the one that I had where it's, you wear it? I don't know if that's it. Fire? Yeah. Yeah, I think I had this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, if that, if that's the same spire, I don't know. Uh, no, yeah, I don't different, know. different spire. All right. So I need to or buy they could it. change the logo. I need to buy a trademark or something. Okay. Anyways, um, I had one of these. I think maybe it is. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So, or it's a satellite thing. But yeah, yeah so they, they invest in... Whatever it is. In... Um, Projects that are a little bit looks like the yeah. more click, advanced click companies. Maybe there's a there's a more okay. Yeah, Airwave them. Blossom. Hey, that looks like a coffee like, brewing system. Yum. All right. Up Aerial club. innovation. Okay. Camp six. All right. Operating system waste industry. So these are like pretty yeah. intense local motion. So we know that that's not card local. sharing. We've heard no, I think you're thinking local motors. Oh, so like a motor. This is okay. So this was acquired by Zipcar, but it's a it's a car yeah. sharing. All right. Keep dish going. craft. This is kind of cool. It's like a it's like a robotic dish thing okay marble there's Momentum. no words about marble okay keep scrolling matter fab yeah let's see what keep going let's see what simbi evolve okay keep going keep going spire uh spire is a space Man data company like no that's not that sorry totally that is totally different yeah that's different <laughs> okay so these so these are very so these are not small scale hard this is, these are a little bit more advanced ones so these might be ones that you go to once you really feel like your yeah. product is getting there or you have a huge market like they're you know they're trying to replace Every dishwasher, dishcraft, so like that's that's a big very bets. big bet. Um, so okay. this is this is one incubator venture fund, okay. venture capital. Next fund. up, yeah. you want to go to um, cool. first build. First build. Okay. So first build is part of GE or funded by GE. It's a little okay. It gets a little confusing because GE GE was doing stuff with Quirky. And now it's difficult to tell that they ever did anything with Quirky. And first build, I think there was. I remember there was like they had an ice maker, and it was like a a, a crowd crowdsource idea. Look at this a GIF. This GIF is not working out. <laughs> I want I want that. I want the giant. So it looks like they do. You know, they have. Well, they have. Oh, right. They did the G like the green bean. This was like a module that yeah. would work with GE products. They do like you know some very makery boards. And also, like, an oven. Is like, it out? Is it an easy double load oven? Can you view the co-create project? Maybe it's a... Can you purchase it? I, mean, I guess it's this door. You can add content. It's a little unclear. Okay, activity. Let's Looks see. Ten months ago, Chris and created a topic. Okay, so they're... Yeah, they're doing an oven. I, it's not 100%. But I think they do, you know, a big project... Maybe with um, GE. Tall, GE. tall cat is tall. <laughs> wow, look yeah, at this. Okay. okay, but it looks like they do. I think you can order the ice maker. 
I think this is kind of a mix because co-create, so I think it's like a little bit like quirky where people work together. Yeah. And then, okay, so and hit, then they manufacture hit, hit, hit back and see, and see if you can order it now. I just want to... I just want to see what actually happens when you click order now. It's a different company. So pre-order pre-order. it. Okay, so you can't order it now. You have to pre-order it now. Late fall 2016. Well, okay, and then what's Opal? Opal is this thing. This is the ice maker. It's called, it's Nugget Ice. Gotcha. Yes, this is it. Okay. So, hold on. There was a there was Okay, a and it's made possible by fanatics like you as the tagline. Products crafted for you by you. Oh, my God, this is so confusing. Yeah, Okay. Micro factory. So I guess, I guess also they, it's an incubator and then there's a place y- yeah. you can physically go. Okay, where, where is it at? You can scroll up. Kentucky. Okay. Kentucky, okay. Micro factory from first built. All so right. you can, there's machines. So this is, you know, part of a lot of hardware incubators is they'll actually have all sorts of machines like laser cutters and, and lasers and water jets and CNC's and shop bots. This can be handy. Is there, can you scroll down to the bottom of the page? Can you, is there an about or anything? <laughs> Can you hit media contacts and just see who, who you talk to when you want to talk to them? Okay, Appliance Park, Product yeah. Information, GE Appliance. Okay, so it's GE. It's GE, but it's like... Yeah, all right. A little unclear. GE Appliances. No, it says GE Appliances. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying unless you dig in to okay. it. What I, here's what I think, okay? This is, gonna, this is, my, I, okay, this is, this is my opinion. Yeah. Watch out, folks. I think GE was really interested in the idea that people would come up with ideas and they would build it. And that's why they tried it with Quirky, it didn't work out. Collaborative yeah. design. Yeah, they tried it with Quirky, it didn't work out. And now they first build, like now they got an ice machine. Because like GE is an appliance company, yeah. they want to do something. This makes sense for GE to yeah. get interested in because they, they make appliances. Yeah, they? I mean like one of the things that you could feel with GE and Quirky was they wanted to see certain things because they had all these patents. So GE talked to us and they're like, hey, Adafruit, do you want to use patents? We're like, no. And then a week later, we saw the announcement with Quirky and they were getting the, like, the Westinghouse stuff or something. And uh, there was just a bunch of things you wanted. You saw that they wanted to push it forward and this was a way to do it without it being GE necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's like a sub-brand or something. So they fund it and they, they get it out there and then maybe if it's successful, it comes in as a GE thing down the road. I don't know. Okay, oh, so that's a hack accelerator. Okay, but it's a hex, it's accelerator. Next up, go to hacks. You got that in the. You also notice the theme. All of the hec, all the ha- hardware accelerator companies they have hardcore names. Um, well, they also have websites that have the um, the video yes. in the background. Totally, it's, it's a requirement Required. for hardware accelerator. Okay, and then they have these like. Yeah. Massive. Okay. View startups. View startups. Let's see who's uh, who's who's doing stuff. Okay, there. so hacks is I think the oldest, and there has been the most. Yeah. Okay, work. Cross five theme. Okay, so they have so Arju Boy. They make a little Arduino okay. thing. Okay, this is alphabetical, and we're only up to B, so they got a bunch. Lincoln Labs. Okay. We know them. Okay. I don't know some of these. Hey, Curio. Everpurse. We know Everpurse. Yeah. Focus. Helios. Fluxbot. Carbon. Cocoon. Light up. Linkets. That's not Linkets. Cool. Linkets. Maker Block. Make block. Okay. Oh wait, sorry. Click yeah, on the watch wrong. out. Yeah, the interface is quite interfacey. Okay. Nomiku, which which actually did quite well. Okay. Opentrons. Opentrons. Pet cube. Petronics. That's okay. actually going. Hey, cat. I like Petronics. Yeah. I don't know how they do. Print. Yeah. Which we know about. And then Robo. particle was part of their. Okay. Part of their one of their All first. Right. Volterra. Okay. Ye link. Grasp. Okay. So this is a I bunch of think. fonts. Oh, look at that little, is that another little cat? Hi, little Fit fox. Fit fox. Fit fox. All right. So, yeah, they have 80 companies. There's a lot. And okay. They, and they do, you know, I think probably twice or three times a year. Okay. And you go there and um, they have different groups like robotics and health and lifestyle. Okay, next up. So they have, like, you know, if you want to make your own, like, circuit printer the particle you want to sign up and they're i think they are pre kickstarter so like if you were going to do a kickstarter okay. you would you would do it ahead of time and let's see if they have any information so the the reason that we're putting apply. these in here is if you're a hardware company and after you read all this and see all this and you're like i want to do an accelerator thing th- this might help you this the, it's like yeah this so this is where you go you know you're like you have kind of a rough prototype but you want to really you want to clean it up you want to do that the first the few chasers before yeah. this one they will uh give you some money they'll give you a space to work in exchange for a little bit of equity usually it's 
about ten thousand dollars per person. Usually, like you know, ten to fifty thousand dollars. This is rough. You have to check each seller is different, and usually for about six percent, yeah. six to ten percent. Okay. So um, very very early. On the theme, got to keep going. Got to keep going, moving. Going, moving. Go to highway one. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if they have a. Oh, they got the video. They have this big yes. video and these big square buttons. All right. So they're in uh, California. Hax is in Shenzhen okay. and also in California. They okay, wait, wait, wait. The, the, scroll up. Let's see what their, their thing is. They are, they works with hardware startups of the future. Okay. Okay, so see. Startup portfolio. portfolio. Let's see who's in there. Okay, wait, wait. 67 startups from 12 countries, 12 female founders. Oh, let's get that. They're okay, 100 so million. Open okay, open mic. Yep. And then there's some very gigantic images. This is taking a while, but it looks like a lot of wearables. Yeah. And, Hardware and, and, and videos, and um, they are part of PCH. Okay, so there's PCH, and then there's this. Oh, they got Fab there. Well, so Lime Lab, yeah, yeah these, these acquisitions. Maybe they bought Fab because they had that. Um, Gigantic you know, the, images in the back. Well, that could be a reason. But the other reason they could have got Fab is these flash sales. Maybe they wanted to like have the the mechanics of doing flash sales with hardware. Maybe that's what they they got. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so skateboards, all sorts of, and basically tons of different hardware. And then, you know, this is where you're going to see the the most projects go through. So they'll, you know, you'll, they take a lot of um, companies in. Yeah. Usually one or two founders, and you apply, and you have to pitch them. So you want to be along enough that you can show them what you're doing and, and give them a sense of what you're doing. But then, yes, yeah, similarly, you would go, you would actually have to go to San Francisco and work out of their lab. Yeah. And you'd have usually weekly meetings with some people and, and it's a little bit of like a um, like a like a co-working co yeah, camp. Space. Yeah, co -work, half co-working, half camp, where you know you meet with like a coding camp where you you uh, yeah. get or a writing camp where you you meet with people and you meet with other uh, uh, um, accelerated companies and you work together. And sometimes the companies actually start merging or like you know you're, you're around with thirty other people all doing hardware. Yeah. So you'll bounce. You'll have a lot of people to bounce ideas off of and get advice. You might be very good at CNCing. Somebody might be good at um, hardware, somebody might be good at FPGAs, and maybe you'll all work okay. together a little bit. Uh, here's an observation, opinion, whatever. Here's why I think that um, funding probably makes more sense for others and maybe not in Adafruit. So we have thousands of products in our store now. Um, we make some of them, some of them we sell. I think that when you're a single product company, it's easier to tell the story. You can shop this around, you can do a Kickstarter, you can make a great video, you can go to all these accelerators or whatever they are mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can meet people you can give them one of the devices um, it'd be a little hard to say I want to be an online electronic superstore with 3,000 that products. doesn't make sense because there's no yeah. IP there's no exit there's the, you like, want to have a, an ecosystem but that's very clear if if you're just a store they're gonna be like well you're just a retail yeah shop so like you can't go there and be like I want to be the next Radio Shack yeah or even the next Heath kit that doesn't make a lot of sense yeah. you want to go in there and be like I have a, a product or a family of products that are very directed very yeah. clear and we're going to try to sell a lot of this yeah thing. i think it'd be hard to go in and be like we want to start a factory in manhattan and sell three thousand products they'd be like, they would totally Bleh. never let you in yeah totally because it's like what are you investing in yeah so I, I think that is you know just to be clear for the folks watching um i mean there was there was times where we were approached to get acquired um funding loans and all that stuff and and we thought it was weird because like well what do you actually you know what? Do you, what do you? What, what do you? you get? What are you investing in, really? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's like minty boosts in every Best Buy. Like, it's a very unusual. Yeah. Okay. So there's view. more. Uh, okay. Can you can you fire up Bolt? Yeah. Bolt, Bolt, Bolt. Let's see. Do they have a video in the background? Do they? Do they keep? Oh, they're they keeping with the theme. Okay. Yep. Gigantic people thinking, talking. So if you want to be, if you want to be a hardware accelerator, just put you a really get a video in your background. Big video and yeah. a big square button. Yeah, and you need people at the whiteboard going. You can tell that they're all kind of getting thing on the dire whiteboard. Thing. I'm gonna work on. So Bolt is in Boston, and let's look at their Bolt folio. So they have good puns. Yeah. Oh, you need a password. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go to the portfolio. They have one of the best um, uh, hardware newsletters, by the way. I read it. Often. So. Uh, His name is like Ben Einstein. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of pressure. So it looks like you know a whole bunch of, of hardware, drinking, closet. You can tell hardware, but different squaddle. All sorts of different um, abilities. It looks like they're a little newer. Pavlock is that thing that shocks you. Yes, that is. It's like a prank. And um, but you check it out. So you know, these are the current portfolio companies, and so they'll, yeah. they'll probably be. Um, What's tank utility? Can you scroll down? 
Oh my god, that was not no. my line. Oh, or you watch the video. No, okay, scroll down. No, 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 I no go to tank. What is Where? tank utility? It's under, it's T. I saw it before. Tank utility, what does it do? Smart propane tank levels. That's cool. Okay. I deliver propane, I have propane. Okay. I'm, and propane accessories. I sell propane accessories. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, so that's, those are the ones that, w there's more, of course, but mm -hmm. this is, you know, we're up to like the hour mark here. So um, those are some of the hardware accelerators that you could approach. Yep. And there's probably by the, by the time you watch this video, if you're not watching it live, there's going to be like eight more because there's, there's like a new one every quarter. There's 1,000. There's a lot. Okay. And that's good. Look, there's like tons of software accelerators. Okay. And you know, you can always go to, there's a lot of software accelerators. Well, software, there, there's a lot of startup accelerators that even though they're not hardware focused, they still do hardware. Like Y Combinator does do hardware and they've done a couple of hardware investments and I think 500 startups as well. So if you're applying, you might as well apply. You should focus yeah. on the hardware ones because those are going to get you the most bang for your buck, they usually get a space to work I read in. Hacker News and hardware is super easy. It's extremely easy, Phil. You just, you just need an Arduino and a couple of modules. So all you need is to get everything from Alibaba and Taobao. Yeah. That's what I read just, on Hacker News. Just put it in a box and shake it. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so yeah. there's more. So the next part of this funding that we're gonna talk about yeah. is what if you wanted to sell something or pre-order it? What if you, were a little, what if you didn't wanna do the, the, the VC thing yet? And, and you didn't want to do the uh, accelerator yet. You didn't want to do the accelerator yet. What if you just wanted to like dip your toes in the market, like, like, like a like a toe. 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 Like, what if you wanted to dip your toe in the propane? Yes. So, um, one of the companies um, they were I think just acquired by um, Indiegogo, a Celery, and Celery I believe it was like a button, and it was easy uh, pre-orders. So if you were gonna sell a product, like I think, I think I have a bunch of things I ordered through Celery, but it hasn't shipped. There's this like Bluetooth scale. You stand on it, like 3D scans you and everything. Awesome rendering. I don't think I'm ever gonna get it. No, don't but, exist. But it, this is how it works. It's per transaction, 2% per transaction in addition to the Stripe fees, ASCA Stripe. So you, you're gonna pay money per transaction, but, yeah. but you do not give up any equity. Yeah. It's a trade off. So the, so the previous things were all equity based. Yeah. Now we're talking about cash could, base. Could you go and um, can you find, uh, celery is going to be weird because you're just going to get a bunch of vegetables, but celery like. Um, fees? Yeah, celery fees. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's right here. Try celery. Okay. 2% plus strike. Okay, so let's see. Do they have a video in the background? No, they're not a. No, no, hold on. Hardware accelerator. Okay. No, but this is what it looks like. You get a little box. Yeah, and you get a little button. Can, and you're they like, kind of do the cart management for you. Yeah, when it pre-sales. And here's. They worked with Particle, yeah, Pebble. Boosted Boards, yeah. Pebble. Yeah. So they kind of do a lot for you. Yeah, and this is if you wanted to kind of do pre-orders and not necessarily a Kickstarter, which is kind of like pre-orders too, but they do 2% uh, of the transaction plus it looks like Stripe fees. Okay. Which is about 3%. So basically yeah. it's 5% it's, it's total, but you're on your own, but that might be good, that might be fine. Like if you can design a really nice website and you don't think people are gonna just find you through Kickstarter or Indiegogo or whatever, if you don't want, if you don't need that name recognition, you can DIY yeah. it. Okay, so speaking of DIY, um, we put Tindy in here because let's say if you just wanted to sell a few of something and it's hardware and you wanted to take advantage of a big hardware community. Now Tindy recently was sold to Hackaday and Hackaday before that was recently sold to um, Supply, supply frame. frame. And Which runs fine chips. Yeah, and a million years ago, Hackaday was my site. And I gave it to Weblogs Inc. And it was, everything was sold in Weblogs Inc. to AOL except for Hackaday. So anyways, that's the long you know, story of that. Okay. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, it's now part of Hackaday. And I believe that they do some type of promotion with Tindy, but this is a they way. They do. They tweet. I don't think they blog, but yeah. they, I mean, they maybe. But you can imagine, blog. like this will like there'll be some type of integration now. Emil, who was at Tindy, is now at Netflix. Yeah, but who cares about okay. that? No, anyway. look, this. <laughs> th there, there are people behind these things. Yeah, but he's gone. Yeah, but he made the site. Right. He's a person. <laughs> He's a person. It's made out of people. Okay. Anyways, so, so Celery, fees, Celebrate, right? no, no, because it's, it's a little confusing. So Celery is a pre-order system. Yeah. It's, you're it's still responsible for shipping everything. All they do is basically manage the pre-orders for you. They just do the management. Tindy is direct orders, no pre-ordering capability. Yeah, but they don't ship it. They, they don't ship it either. Yeah. yeah. Neither does Celery. Yeah. You're still you still got to do everything. You're responsible for shipping it, and you have to have it in stock when the order 
comes in. So like if for, we want to buy this. For Tindy, you do for pay. celery, you don't, of course. Right, for okay. celery, you don't, because it's pre-order. Tindy fees. Let's talk about Tindy fees. Ready? Okay. I went to the FAQ. Tindy fees are more reasonable than Amazon, eBay, and other online marketplaces. Thanks, Amber. Listing fees, free. Product sold 5% of the total cost of the order, shipping plus product, plus the payment processing fee. Tindy pays the disbursement fees. It's simple as that. So, so but, probably but, but, wait, wait, there's 7%, 8%. There's, there's more, there's more. Because it was in the FAQ. Why does Tindy take a cut of the shipping fees? On some marketplace sites, sellers will artificially lower price and markup shipping to make up for their pricing. On Tindy, to keep things fair, we want to make sure the price paid by the customer is fair to accomplish this. Tindy takes a cut of the shipping cost. That's pretty clever. Yeah, because otherwise it's like, you know, okay. shipping $20, things $1. So that's Tindy. Next up, it would be impossible to ignore Kickstarter. Kickstarter, who recently posted this, I think like less than 24 hours ago, is uh, creating a creative econ economy. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a very good way to say it. They are making an economy for creative people to make a living. Yeah. And um, 300,000 part-time and full-time jobs created. That's what they estimate. 5.3 billion in economic impact generated. 8,800 new companies and nonprofits created. Now, Kickstarter has fees. Kickstarter has an editorial process. Kickstarter has, you have to have a video, you have to have, you have backers. And they say it's not a store, but you know what, people think it's a store. They so, think it's a store. So even though it's not pre-orders, it's basically pre-orders. If yeah. you're using it for hardware, everyone is going to expect it's a pre-order. Yeah. And, wait, there's more. So I saw this, because I was just gra grabbing screenshots for the, the broadcast mm -hmm. here tonight. And this is Kickstarter creators lifted by Amazon Launchpad. So it looks like Kickstarter and Amazon Launchpad, like Amazon's getting in the business. Like if something's successful on Kickstarter, then you kind of go through and Amazon might be able to do fulfillment and more. Like you can see them yeah. playing around with this. That's interesting. Mostly it, because creators who go on Kickstarter are extremely bad at fulfillment. I'll be honest. Like they're not, they oh, yeah. don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to keep stock. They don't know how to ship. They don't know how to do customs forms or lithium ion certification. So Amazon yeah. is, is a company that can do that. They oh, will take a chunk, but they'll yeah. do it for you. Straight up, one of the most common emails we get is, I had a successful whatever, whatever crowdfunded thing, and I can't, I don't have anything. To, I don't know how to man manufacture. Will you make the thing? Because I used Adafruit modules or code or something. Yeah. And we're like, that's not, we can't do it. Yeah. Or will you do fulfillment for me? Because I can't. I can't go to the post office every day. We usually get the first one, not the second one, because rarely do they get to the second yeah. step of actually shipping. So one thing about Kickstarter that I, I like that they, they do, um, there's a lot of things I like that they do, but this one in particular is they do keep the conversation going about, hey, like if you're going to do shipping rewards, like here's how to do them, and here's a bunch of stuff to think about. And they're like, you should send one of the packages, make sure it's the right postage. Like they've seen and heard everything, and they've seen all types of success mm -hmm. and all types of failure. So look at their blog, like subscribe to it and read it. But uh, for Postal, if you're offering that as a reward, be careful, because it can burn you. Like shipping is... Yeah, you, what if you, if you lose two or 3% of your packages, which you can do when you ship international, they get stolen or damaged or destroyed or misshipped, yeah. you're gonna have to cover that. So work yeah. that into your funding model. Uh, okay, next up, crowd supply. And we skipped Indiegogo, but it's very similar. Yeah. And it's like the same, and it's very similar to it. Yeah, I think, I think the, 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 the Indiegogo has less, I think, editorial oversight. They recently did a partnership with Arrow. Um, I haven't seen it in action yet, but apparently like you could have Arrow kit stuff and like Indiegogo would, would ship it and like, or like yeah. you'd, 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 sorry, uh, you'd be able to get the products sold through there. Anyways, um, on kind of the other end of the spectrum is crowd supply. And I say other end is because they're coming in hard with saying um, we are we are more successful than Kickstarter and Indiegogo. This is on their site. They say over twice the success rate of Kickstarter and Indiegogo, we help hackers, makers, and designers turn great ideas into incredible things. And they're not messing around. They're like, look, here's what we do that's different. Um, they help with the launch, the funding. They support um, your need to deliver. 100% of funded projects have been delivered to Backers. Which is pretty impressive. 58% of launch products have successfully funded two times more Kickstarter for comparable projects. Okay, here's another one. $63,000. Average amount raised per successful project. Six times more than Kickstarter for comparable projects. And then they go through and they say, like, what, what, they, what they get in return of this. 
Yeah. And and uh, let me pop over to the the graphic. So if you do the standard, they take five percent. Guided five to ten percent. Custom ten to fifteen percent. And they do a fee, pre-launch page, campaign review, campaign management, fulfillment options, post-campaign sales, marketing consultation, media asset creation, dedicated PR team. Now the thing about crowd supply that I like the most is after it's done, there's a buy button and you can buy it. And from the same group. They will do the fulfillment yeah. for pre-sales and then it's the same for yeah. post-sales. So we have... It's a little bit iffy. Like they, I think now they have a button, but it's like, it takes you to another site and it's like confusing. Well, you saw when we were, we were trying to figure out the first build thing, can I buy the oven or not? Nope, okay. Can, yeah. I, can I buy the nugget ice? Nope, got to pre... I can, it's, it's order now. It takes to another site. Order now, and then, now you can pre-order now. Now yeah. it's Aurora nuggets. So, what? wasn't it called something else? Like, I don't know. Opal. Opal nuggets. <laughs> well, whatever. But you never know. They might have changed the name since then. Yeah. So, um... But more advanced... These projects are very hackery, very advanced. They're very electronics-based. Yeah. Like SDRs M and laptops. My, my Lenovo... Uh, not Lenovo. Uh, my Novena. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Okay. Uh, this funding stuff is confusing. Uh, yeah. So... The uh, we have but one of Bunny's open source laptops. It just arrived. Yeah, we got one, and I hit the buy button on Crowd Supply. So pretty, it's much more integrated. Cool. Very okay. integrated. They take a little bit more, but they'll do a lot more for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of other kind of pre-ordery things, we've seen folks go at it alone. Yeah. They've done pre-orders on their site, so it's not Kickstarter. It's not Indiegogo. It's not Celery. They just make their own website. They just make their own website. Yeah. The one that I think everyone in our little maker world, or big maker world now, is familiar with is Glowforge. So, Glowforge, if you go to Glowforge, is it Glowforge.com? Probably, yeah. Probably. yeah. Um, $27 million worth sold in 30 days. It's the biggest 30-day crowdfunding campaign in history. However, they've not shipped yet. They are still working on it. Yeah. And um, if, you, if you go to the Glow, can you go to the Glowforge site? Um, what they are selling is a really high quality um, 3D laser printer, that's what they call it, um, for a, an incredible price. So what can you print with a Glowforge? They, they call it print, but it's, it's laser. It's a laser, it's a laser cutter. Yeah, but if, can, you, can you go to pre-order or the homepage? Oh yeah. yeah, so if you go to pre-order, you can get it for 40% off. Um, it's eventually gonna be 8,000. And uh, right now it's 4,700. Now, if you compare that to our epilogue um, that we have, epilogue lasers are what, like 15K, $15,000? Our epilogue was 15. Now they have a, the a simpler one, which is 8K. Yeah. This is about half the price of Yeah, so this is why, uh, this is why they have 27 million in funding. Zing, that was the name, the epilogue. Zing, Zing. yeah. And uh, that's, the, it, and the, the Glowforge basic is 2,300. Without an air filter, which yeah, you should get an air filter. You should get an air filter. Yeah. So, um, but this is a hard. But it's all pre-order, and you know, I will say there's something about pre-orders. So, pre-orders are incredibly powerful, but if you, I don't want to say like you know, there's one type of funding that's better for anybody, but if you take um, venture capital or you take seed, it is in a sense a gift. Like you're giving away equity, but if you go out of business, it doesn't really matter like you're it's like oh yeah we expect you to go to business because again nine out of ten of the investments go to business yeah with pre-orders there you do have much more legal liability you're taking someone's money or you have their credit card information and you're going to eventually charge their credit card you, they can come after you i mean there yeah. there is they can take you to court because you sold them something and never delivered in the credit card company yeah. will do a chargeback and they will hold your phone. I mean, it just, I'm just saying that there's there's a lot more risk in doing a pre-order. Pre-order means something. It means yeah. I'm taking your money and I'm going to give you a thing back. Kickstarter is actually a little different. Kickstarter, even though people think of it as pre-orders, yeah. it's actually a gift with like a kind of like, I really hope that this works out and if it works out, I'll give you something. There's, yeah. there's no legal risk with Kickstarter, but there is. Well, there's you, been some cases. I think that there was one so far. I think there's a class action. Fraud. Yeah, there was. It was like, like outright fraud. Yeah, someone's like, I'm just leaving. They were, yeah, they yeah. just like basically took the money off. If you can, if you actually try to do your hardware that was a Kickstarter, Indiegogo or, or Crowd Supply and it didn't work out, there's like, hey, you know, hey, like here's the books. Yeah. I tried, it turns out that you can't make a laser razor. 
uh, and you're done. You do. There's nothing that can happen to you. With with pre-orders, I'm a little bit more nervous. So these Glowforge people are clearly very confident that they'll be able to deliver. It's twenty-eight million dollars. It's a lot of money to have, and that's. I, it a sounds lot of to me money. like part of the challenge with um, getting that much money is you need to get more money. You're you're yeah. you're so successful. You need more money. That happens all the time yeah. with Pebble. After they had their first like million dollar Kickstarter, yeah. they were like, oh, "We actually can't manufacture the, yeah. at this price." We, they, but they used that success and leveraged that into saying, "Like, hey, we've proven there's a market, just like Cass AR. are." Yeah. Like Jerry did a Kickstarter, look, we got have money, a, and then yeah, look at this interest. Hey, that, you know, you, investors, you'll definitely get your money back because people are interested. Yeah, like so, we've proven a market, and so that's very, very common. We see people doing these. Yeah crowdfunding things, pre-order things, and then using that when they go to a venture capital company and, and using yeah. that to, to show the market. Okay, so that's funding and that's, also risky. <laughs> and that's all the stuff that, uh, that we don't do. So here's a boring article about Adafruit from 2008. I'm just gonna break it down. We're super boring. Boring. Yeah, so if you Google for it, it's on EDN. 15 steps to starting your own electronic kit business. And I think that one, well, I know. So Chris Anderson saw this is how he started, like the DIY yes. drones company. A lot of he electronic said so. said, I read companies. Yeah, he said, I read this article and I really liked it. And, um, you know, this was eight years ago. And you talked about margins and more. And maybe you can explain when you're thinking of something like Circuit Playground, which is this is about, ooh, so we're back to the so beginning here. Bring it back. So when you're thinking about something like Circuit Playground, how do you price it? Like if all the components cost $5 altogether, what do you sell it for in our store? What do you sell it to uh, resellers? Yeah, check out the video. We did a video where we talked about pricing, but mm -hmm. usually about, you want about uh, triple or quadruple okay. the bill material Because that's cost. what funding is. Like when you think of this, you're like, how much am I going to need to pay for yeah. this? Yeah, well, it's so it's a little bit different, I think, for a lot of these companies. Like for example, you see a Glowforge is 40% off. Yeah. So they're basically saying we're taking out one of the margins. Yeah, So or they're selling at cost. Yeah, well, to, you know, to get people excited about these crowdfunding things, unless your thing is so cool that you can basically make the reward be, like say, you know, it's a $5 part, let's say the final cost of the product is twenty dollars. Usually, when you do a Kickstarter or Indiegogo or whatever, you will basically say, "Hey, you know, the first five thousand people get it for ten bucks," and you'll maybe lose a little bit of money, like the chip computer. Also, like they sold it below cost to get people excited, and then they would pick up other accessories. So, you know, when you think about your margin, especially when you're doing these crowdfunding, remember they're going to take about ten to fifteen, twenty percent. There's going to be losses. Are you doing free shipping? You have to add shipping costs. So, like all of those things have to be added in. 3% are going to get lost by the post office or destroyed in transit. Um, you know, the 5% fees, whatever, ex extra, extra. And then you have to calculate your margin. Okay. Triple that because all of that is your cost. Like okay. you can't ignore cost of shipping. You can't ignore cost of credit card fees. Okay. So you did this 15 step thing. Yeah. And that margin approach for funding Adafruit, multiply that times all of our products. Yeah. So that's, that's our business. Yeah. That's our business. We, That's how we run a business. We don't do pre-orders and we ship direct and That's we right. charge we shipping. Don't, we don't do back orders and we ship, when you're a customer that comes on our site, we ship usually same day. From stock. From stock. And the inventory is inventory. Yeah. And there's special exceptions like purchase orders for schools and stuff like that. It's different. Um, and then special cases and like business to business relationships that we have where they'll want 10,000 of something. But we don't put ourselves in a spot where we're selling something we can't. We never sell something that we've never made before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I as far as funding goes, um, that's how we've done it. We've mm -hmm. done it kind of one product at a time, having the margins for um, covering our overhead, and then the margins for a reseller to purchase something from us. And we don't have to worry about that ten yeah. percent to. Yeah. I mean, we, because we are just doing it directly, but yeah. it's taken many years to set up the credit card processing and like the PayPal yeah. and refunds and returns. But in exchange. I pay the minimum credit card fees. I don't have to pay an additional fee. Yeah. That 5% that um, the crowd su supplier crowdfunding sites take, yeah. it's not that much, but if your margin's only 40%, that's a chunk of margin. So, so here, here's what I'll say yeah. for the, a lot of the folks that are watching this. If you're mm -hmm. doing a small, like, you know, breakout board style thing, 
Sell it on Tindy. Try that first. Yeah, sure. Do that first. Sell five to ten. Sell five to ten, and then maybe later on, if it's like a little bit bigger, a little bit more expensive, do something like uh, crowd supply. Yeah, I really like Paul Stoffergen's way that he did the Teen C three. Yeah, um, he made them all. <laughs> yeah. He basically was like, I am, you know, I I've made this essential design. I yeah. know this. It's it's pretty much ready to go. And I'm using Kickstarter just to gauge how many to make for my first run. Like he didn't, it wasn't like, oh, I have this plan idea, this like yeah. ecosystem. He's like, nope, this is like the Teen C3. I just want to know how many, how many should I make when I go to manufacture? Yeah. So he was using Kickstarter as a way to gauge manufacturing run, which is, yeah. which is very smart. Yeah. But the design was finished. Okay. So the other thing that we did was we looked at other companies that are kind of like Adafruit that wanted to do things that we didn't do yet, or maybe we won't do, and how did they accomplish it? So a good example is we did not build a building. We're in Manhattan, there's tons of buildings here. Mm -hmm. um, Spark Fun, which is kind of like, Adafruit used to get compared to it a lot, I don't think as much anymore. Big Brother. Um, yeah, how to build a building. So this was back in 2013, when um, Nate, the CEO of SparkFun, said we are now going to build an 80,000 square foot building starting in May of 2000. 13 and in order to do that and this is uh, one of the things I really like about spark fun Like lots of things but this is one of the things I really like is they show their work. They're Very like transparent. They're like we're getting a building Here's how much it costs. So um, JP Morgan Chase in Colorado did a case study on the loan that spark So it's another type of funding. Took. Yeah, so we had to cover loans because like can you just go to a bank? This is the only company I know that has a loan. Sure you can and SparkFun posted up, here's what their borrower schedule is. Now, Flywheel, I think, is Nate's company that owns the land, and then they build the building on top of it. That's why it's Flywheel, not SparkFun. I think that's my understanding of this. Um, but there was two parts of the loan. Chase Bank loan, that's 50% of it. That was about $4.3 million. And then SBA loan, 40% of the uh, portion of the loan, about three point one. But so their monthly rate from the SBA loan was higher than yeah, Chase. Yeah, so they, they, figured, they figured out. So they kind of did a mix match. Yeah, so they got, they got about $9 million bucks. And that is for the building that they, they did a build out. Like yeah. they, there is no building and now it's a spark from building. And what's nice about a loan, well, there's, there's a couple things that are nice about a loan. First off, you're not gonna be able to really get a loan if it's, you're just starting out. Like nobody's, it, it, you, can, you can do it for equity, but you're not, the bank is probably not gonna loan you money unless you put up a collateral. So you have a of proven your house. track record. It's very hard and yeah. it's a lot of effort and you know, you're not gonna get any guidance. It's just gonna be a loan officer. So for Spark Fund, it makes more sense to get a loan because the money that they need, they're not, they don't want to give away equity. Because if you don't have to give away equity, yeah. that's best. And they're extremely confident that they can repay the loan. Yeah, they know what their historic month to month yeah. is and they know where their company So I think it's like going. the schedule, it's like they have to pay yeah. like a thousand, hundred thousand dollars a month, which sounds like a lot, but they're, yeah. you know, a 20, 30 million dollar company um, at the time. It's, it's like, okay, that's, that's something reasonable for us to, you know, we won't have to be paying the overhead of rent. Instead, we're going to put that into basically this mortgage. Yeah, and so that was that was around 2013. Now, to wind back the clock a little bit, Lady Ada, so I've been following the maker market for a long time. Where are companies as far as the, the maker world? How, mm -hmm. much, how much were they uh, publicly stating they, they made in annual revenue? And what's interesting is this is from 2010. And in 2010, um, this is where the companies were at the time. So approaching 1 million in re revenue. So dangerous prototypes, bug labs, DIY drones, evil mad scientists. DIY drones is now a 100 plus million yeah, venture funded company called 3D Robotics. Now in 2010, Adafruit, Arduino, Beagleboard, Chumbi, Liquidware, MakerBot, Makershed, Parallax, Seed, and Slow Robotics. They were, over, they were in the over 1 million. Yeah, Liquid Wars out. Megabot yeah, but, went high and then went out. Yeah, but all of these in that center weren't to 10 million yet. And then SparkFun was the only one in this group that was over 10 million in revenue. They were the biggest. And they this were was huge, in yeah. 2010. And this is from a presentation that um, you and I did at Food Camp East. It was an uh, event. And we're going to do, we're going to show this video from this. I dug this up from the archives because it was on blip.tv and that site went away. Yeah, yeah speaking of venture funding, See? it went away. Um, and uh, so we're, it's a five minute speed round thing. And then um, we'll tell you a little bit about the story afterwards because it's been six years since we did this presentation. I don't think anyone's seen this presentation in a long time. So what has happened in six years? How is this list different? What's, what's new? 
Good. How's this related to funding? I mean, it's like how's this related to funding? No, but you're, like it that some of them took venture funding. Yeah, or? some of like MakerBot took funding and they got acquired. Um, Maker MakerShed is part of Make took f has funding. Mm -hmm. uh, Bug Labs not around. Dangerous prototypes. I don't Bug Labs took funding too, didn't they? Bug Labs took funding. They, yeah. yeah, DIY drones now 3D robotics. Uh, Evil Mad Scientist is didn't still take funding. still independent. Um, Chumby they're out of business. Uh, BeagleBone is part of TI. Not re wasn't really independent. Um, Arduino. Uh, in a trademark, international trademark dispute. I think they took some funding too, no? Yeah, Parallax, privately held. Seed, privately held. Sora Products, privately held. SparkFun, took a loan. So if you look at all the hardware companies. But no funding. SparkFun is just loans. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at all of the different maker companies, these are the fundings that some of them took and some of them didn't. Yeah. Um, Little Bits wasn't even around as a company. Well, yeah, you're right. It's yeah, missing. this has only been six years. Yeah. So let's watch this video. Okay, let's watch Young. Let's Hunt. watch this video, and then we'll tell you what happened after this. Mm -hmm. At least with Adafruit, because that's the one we know about the most. Okay. Okay. Let's watch this vid. Yeah. Hi, I'm Phil Drone, uh, senior editor of Make, and this is Laura Free. Hello. And uh, our presentation is Million Dollar Baby. We uh, make hardware and we give away the plans and we let people sell it and share it. And uh, it turns out this is actually a really good business. Uh, Tim predicted this maybe a few boot camps ago, and this is what uh, open hardware is. So um, I'm just going to briefly go over what. Oh. Uh, I'm going to briefly go over what open source hardware is not working. Uh, what open source hardware is basically felt like open source software, except instead of code, we're also sharing CAD files, circuit layouts, uh, core of HDL, um, CPLD, all sorts of steps from um, the mechanical all the way to uh, firmware and APIs. Um, so designers or hackers will uh, design gadgets and basically release the files, and then other people can manufacture it. Um, basically put stuff under Creative Commons. Um, the only things that are slightly different are you know, patents, and trademarks uh, are more in use because when there's manufacturability, there's also more liability. So um, as is licenses are more important, and we're starting to draft um, a license for open source hardware that covers all this. So this, um, I, I count things by like food camps now. There was only a few projects um, early on, and now lately we've been doubling. We're up to almost like 300 projects. Um, this year and next year, it'll be around 300 open source hardware projects altogether. And uh, these are some of the companies. So I actually emailed all of them. They actually told me how much money they made. This is kind of cool. Approaching a million, over a million dollars, and over $10 million. So this is uh, from DIY drones to Wi-Fi alarm clocks. These are companies that are actually selling open hardware. Uh, so the first company is Adafruit. This is the company I run. Uh, we basically teach people electronics and then coincidentally also, give, uh, also sell parts to follow those tutorials. <coughs> We also do weird stuff like how to make your own cell phone jammers, and we make over $1 million. You also have a flashlight that when you shine it, you throw up. Um, next up is the Arduino, and this is where a lot of projects kind of, when you see all the companies, one of the things they have in common is the Arduino platform. 150,000 units sold. There's a presentation, I think on Sunday, a DIY maker fair, there'll probably be some Arduinos. And this is a lot of people doing art projects with this. Uh, Bug Labs is a, a company in New York. They're VC funded. They basically uh, have something that's a more expensive sort of plug and play computer. So you take an LCD, a CPU, and a distant sensor, and you put it together, and now you have like, you know, some sort of detector. Uh, and they're almost a million dollars. Chumpy, um, this was given away at one of the earlier food camps. Uh, open source ambient computer. Um, they have a cool type of patent where uh, it's almost like a patent commons. Um, so when you see some patent reform, a lot of people are talking about doing something similar to Chumpy. Uh, Dangerous Prototypes is a one-man shop in the Netherlands, but um, his stuff's manufactured in China and then sold around the world. Uh, he basically makes like the bin utils of hardware, um, and he's approaching uh, one million dollars in revenue. Yeah, new entry as of this year. This is DIY drones, making your own military drones. Now it's an open source <laughs> hardware project. The co-founder is editor in chief of Wired, so it's getting a nice push there. And he actually crashed into Los Alamos Labs recently, <laughs> on accident. approaching one million dollars. Uh, next up is Evil Mad Scientist Labs, uh, a couple in Oakland, uh, California, and they make all sorts of cool projects from bristle box to clocks to uh, 3D printers that use can caramelized sugar. Um, and they uh, sell some kits for their project as well, and they're approaching one million. Um, next up, Liquidware. This is uh, a company that's kind of built around the Arduino project, so we're seeing multi-million dollar companies. They're well over a million dollars. And they make lots of accessories. They're dabbling with open source hardware banking, which I don't quite get, but whatever. They're bankers. Um, they also do hardware. Um, next is MakerBot Industries. They're in Brooklyn, and uh, they have uh, basically CAD plans, electronic plans to make your own 3D printer at home. So you can make 
your own, cool. you know, open source hardware that makes open source hardware, and then you upload the 3D files to Thingiverse, which is our open source hardware sharing platform. Yeah, Bree, co-founder of Ignite, was this co-founder of that company, Small World. Um, next up, uh, Makershed. So Make is like this giant pop culture, pop culture phenomenon. The gift shop at the end is basically Makershed, where you can buy electronics that you see from the pages of Make or from Maker Faire. Um, then it's Parallax. Parallax is an older company that has been doing like DIY and educational electronics for a while, and they're starting to, uh, they've done open source hardware-like things, but now they're formally doing open source hardware, uh, which is kind of exciting because they're sort of a standby and they're over a million dollars in revenue. Solar Robotics uh, Canadians also um, built around kind of an Arduino business model now selling Arduinos. But heritage of uh, Beam Robotics, Robot Kits, Educational Electronics, well over a million dollars as well. Now they're developing their own hardware because they think there's money in that. Uh, and then finally, there's SparkFun Electronics in Boulder, Colorado. So selling all the little pieces and parts and sensors and well over Greeno. Um, they have services and uh, manufacturing capabilities in-house, and they have over $10 million in revenue. Yeah, and they're extremely proud of that, and that's very good. They're leading the charge right now with the with revenue. Um, so that's just 13 companies, around $50 million, around 200 projects, there's 300 uh, coming up soon, and um, there's dozens more companies, you know, there's only 20 slides that we can do. Um, we think this is going to be a billion dollars in just a couple short years, and that's open source hardware. Thank you. Okay, you can, okay. You can see me with... Blonde hair. Yeah, well, but it's the, still me. Yeah, so the you know, it was a blonde I, wig. Sometimes I get asked about predictions and stuff. So I thought that this 2015, which was last year, would be around you know a billionish in in the the, the the value, and and that sound insane, but it was right on. And DIY robotics, yeah, yeah, DIY drones, computer robotics, took yeah. 50 million funding. The, the valuation of these companies is is well into the billions. Yeah. So um, so what's happened to Adafruit since then? So we I I think that. You were not even considered um, as far as like what was going to be the 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 bigger company six years from that date. I'm sorry, but this is this is you know this type of funding is the slow slog. You know, which is that's right. It's just like no funding, no loans, VC. But instead, it's like selling a little bit, making your own store, running it, negotiating credit card fees. It takes and, six years. And to go back to the quote that um, that fellow said. Okay. No, it, I'm, I'm interested in this. Is I like to think of entrepreneurs as fire starters. You can build a fire with brush, then twigs and branches, and while it may take a while, the flame is sustainable. My flame is sustainable. So I feel like it, burning, burning yeah. fire. So you know, if if you want to know what's happened, you know, six years later, um, you won't find a glowing puff piece in the New York Times about Adafruit. You found them in Quirk, about Quirky and about a lot of other companies, but. Um, you are going to get ignored because you did it the slow way. I didn't get ignored. I just didn't get puff pieces. Yeah, and this is the thing. So I don't want to say like, look, I don't think it's fair to say I was completely ignored. I, we did get awards. We got announcements. You, you got them. you and the company for achievements and like cultural change and more. But Adafruit and how you built a company without funding. I guess that's true. Is I not guess, the lead I guess story. Me, the person, has gotten awards. You, the, the person, the the, co the company. Um, for the social change and the educational value it has, but I've been in the same room as you when journalists talk. They're like, "Why aren't you more like Quirky?" Because mm -hmm. it's they like the the VC story, the big bet. Mm -hmm. So I'll say this: if you're if you're addicted to that, if you're addicted to the funding and things, um, great. You'll probably have more media, more stories. Um, but at the end of the day, as they say, um, the the business press mm -hmm. generally ignores. The, the 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 quote here, which is the sustainable fire. Yeah. They don't they don't they don't like to hear the story of like oh you have margins you have a sturdy business you will get ignored about your company and these kickstarters and all these things need they because they want to only cover the next big thing they want to cover the huge thing not the everyday thing. Yeah. Look, every day is not. It's yeah. every day. So I want to manage the expectation because I believe this is this is the this is the the video that we're going to do later marketing. Mm -hmm. I believe crowdfunding, and um, hardware accelerators, and a lot of these things require that sizzle, that big story. This is the next. Yes, thing. they do. They do need a little bit of a sizzle. I mean, like that's the venture capital. But yeah. again, they're not going to do it unless there's network effects. Or yeah. recurring revenue. So, It'd be hard other than that. Yeah. So I'm almost trying to speak to you as, like back in time. Okay. Th this Lady Ada 2000, with blonde hair. Hey, look, it's going to be a slog. And, and there'll be successes. 
but you're not going to get the same response to the company unless you decide to take funding and go big. Yeah. And, it's, and if you're drawn to that, um, go for it. But if that's not for you, then kind of self-funding is the way. So um, results, uh, 2000, um, you can look at it in Here's Adafruit for, we did Inc. for three years. Um, 2015, uh, sorry, 2014 revenue uh, for one year, 33 million. Good work, Lady Ada. Yay. And then 2015, over 42 million. That's 10 years of work. That's not, so. Well, that's not adding it up. That's just for one year. No, I know what I'm saying. Yeah. At, at 10 years of work, you can get to a point where your company makes as much in revenue as you would get in VC funding, but it's going to take a lot longer. Yeah. And it, it depends on whether you think a success is s slow, steady, every year growing, 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 or whether you want to kind the, of take the, the $10 the, million the funding. Payout. And then have a big payout. Yeah. But there's a high, you know, it's gasoline. You might burn out. Yeah. So that that's that's what you decided to do. That's what we decided to do. And I do think that the, the VC world, the crowdfunding world, requires that big Hail Mary, even a loan. I think when you take a loan, you're like, you're making a big bet. Yeah. All those things. And so, um, you know, the whole point of this video was what type of funding makes sense for you? Yeah, it's it depends. You know, I always tell people you can always uh, you can start with one thing and then continue. You can start with uh, Tindy or selling on your own site, and you know, or or having a little store on Amazon or or eBay or something. And then um, you know, there's some small hardware companies like uh, Mike Osman who sells his little RF hacking tools through. There's a couple stores online that that sell them, and then you can if you know that works out, then you can do a crowdfunding campaign for your next big product because you're like you already have something that you know how to do you want to make an upgraded version um some sdrs i've seen lately have done that you know they have a basic sdr and then they crowdfund for a big one and then you know if that works out then go to an accelerator if that works out get seed funding if that works out go to bc so you can go slow yeah and at each stage if it doesn't work out you can you always can lean back on like okay well even if the vc funding if i went for fun because sometimes you go to funding and you don't get it that's very common. I, yeah. You can always lean back and say, look, at least I have a store. I can, I can continue getting revenue coming in. Yeah. And I think when, when you're taking funding or loans or you're taking money from someone, you're talking about what's going to happen. This is why the media loves Theranos. They love Quirky. They, lo they love all these things because it's about the future, the unknown future, this big thing. It's going to change the world. Yeah. And, and even pre-orders, you're going to get this thing. You know what's fun? Ordering stuff online. You know what sucks is like either you don't get it or you finally get it it's not so good. But every part in between oh, the glow is a lot of fun. Is, the Glowforge is a perfect laser cutter. Until I the moment love gets the Glowforge. I can't wait to get my Glowforge. Until you get it. Until you get it. And, yeah. or, or maybe you won't get it. And so it's one of those things where like um, I've just seen like lives destroyed. Yeah. And that's why and that's why me beaming thoughts back to 2010 Lady Ada is this like if if you wanted to be the, in the in the spotlight it would have had to be because of a promise. It wouldn't be because of what you've done. Mm -hmm. It's what you're going to do. Yeah. And so that's why it's scary I think. Cuz like we don't operate like that. We're not operating the company on what we're going to do that hasn't happened yet. I've always heard that um men get credit for things that they're going to do or that they're expected to do and women only get credit for things they've done. So that could be part of it. It's like, it's just tougher for when people see a woman-led company. It might be tougher for them to think of like, oh, this is, what's the promise of this as opposed to yeah. Corgi, which was a, you know, a male-led company and it's like, oh, this is going to be really, really big. Yeah, I mean, like, again, and, and I, I don't mind this being the vibe, like, you were compared to Ben, another New York hardware company, and we were just not an interesting story. We would talk to the journalists and the story would come out and it would only be quirky. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, oh, he went there, it was great, and like everything's zany, and like the future's gonna happen, this is the future of everything. And look, it's an egg timer. It tells you when you need to get new eggs. Yeah. You know. By the way, eggs last like three weeks in the fridge. You know? So so how, how rare do you eat eggs that you need something to yeah. keep track of eggs? So so the I think the funding that people pick. You have to figure out what your personality is. Are you like flamboyant and you want to be like on stage and like this is the future, this is the Uber of breakout boards, or something, you know, like mm -hmm. if, if that's for you, then like funding might work out. Venture capital might work. You're gonna have to travel a bunch. All the people that we we see that run these companies are at conferences, or they're they're moving and shaking. And then the ones that haven't taken funding, they're kind of heads down, focus on. Sale is one of my favorites. Yeah. They didn't, they, I don't think they took any funding and they're just, they make the best logic analyzers. Grinding away. So it just, Grinding away. It, yeah, it really, it really depends 
on what you want as a as a company. Yep. Okay. These are serious choices are being made. Before it was just like which op amp to use. Now you're which microcontroller platform. Now you're now you're thinking about the rest of your life. Yeah, the, the, I, company. Yeah, I think funding doesn't just mean the money that you're taking. It means the type of personality that you're going to either become mm -hmm. or it's a personality that's going to be revealed. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that's All funding. Right. That's funding. Heavy stuff. Tense. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Okay. It's money. Okay. So the next one is going to be marketing. Yeah. That's going to be fun. We'll go through all the different things that we do to, to get people excited and to know yeah. about the products that we make. Maybe we'll pick a product. And pick yeah. I mean, Circuit Playground, but look at a past one. Or, the, or just Circuit Playground, yeah. look at all the things that we did. The, good theme, the, the theme for the, the entire thing that I think is good is um, good information is marketing. Yeah. So if you put out good information, that's an excellent form of marketing. And I think that's what you do. I, okay. think that, I think that's why you're successful. Yay. One of the big reasons. Open source. Funnel marketing. Okay. All right. And that is the Desk of Lady Ada. All right. Thanks, everybody. Lots of journey. Bye-bye. Later.